Hello and hello once again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the D Rank Warriors. Today's episode will be focusing on Pangoro, a very interesting fighting dark type, on the type that has always been kind of irrelevant. Um, sadly, even in its debut generation, uh, Gen 6, it was just never a really good Pokemon because A, it was outclassed by Scrafty pretty much, and B, Fairy types. Fairy types pretty much made any dark fighting type combination really bad, because when there weren't fairy types, Scrafty was one of the top Pokemon on the type because of its great immunity. But now because of the prevalence of fairy types and fairy type coverage being everywhere, um, Pangoro and Scrafty are both just really, really mediocre. And Pangoro especially suffered because it actually has a very nice niche that differs it from Scrafty quite a bit. So we'll go into that as we uh, scroll through. Alright, so, for Pangoro sets, this is the main set that most people use on the fighting type. Uh, this is the choice band set with close combat, knockoff, drain punch, and earthquake. Now, you don't necessarily need earthquake per se, because a bunch of other Pokemon probably will be running that. Uh, your Toxicroak could be running it, your uh, Como, your Terrakion could be running it. A lot of Pokemon could be running this, so you don't need this per se. It's still very useful to have, don't get me wrong, especially when you're dealing with Toxic Rest. It becomes extremely crucial, but you could run it for something else, or you could choose one of your other secondary fighting steps to run something else. Because this Pokemon does have a few coverage options, like Iron Head, well, not Iron Head, Poison Jab is one of them. It also has access to Parting Shot, so it can act as a pivot, but that only works if you have, like, defensive Pokemon with you. And that's a little too niche, for, especially for Pangoro, because it's not exactly the full PS Pokemon, and it can't exactly pull that off very well. But you may have noticed that Pangoro has access to Mold Breaker and Scrappy. Scrappy. Um, both of these abilities are very, very good, especially Mold Breaker, because Mold Breaker allows you to deal with one of the most obnoxious Pokemon that fighting has to deal with, Mimikyu. And before, in the Dynamax uh, generation, you could actually run a Choice Scarf Pangoro Dynamax, live a player from Mimikyu, and then proceed to KO it with a, with a Steel move. Uh, the Steel move you used, I do not remember exactly, uh, you actually did use Iron Head, but yeah, you would use Iron Head, uh, the, the super version of Iron Head essentially, Max Steel Spike, and you would eventually Oko Mimikyu through that because of how strong Pangoro is naturally, and it just did so much to Mimikyu that it didn't even matter. Now, granted, that was situational at best, but it was still something to deal with Mimikyu. Now, you're slower than Mimikyu, and you're gonna get killed every time. And even with screen support, you're probably going to die against Mimikyu. So yeah, that's why you don't particularly like uh, Mimikyu. But against other Pokemon, uh, it stops Sturdy from uh, Avalog, which is pretty nice. If you would, if you Oko'd Avalog, that is, uh, Close Combat does not Oko Avalog whatsoever. And it would have been really nice, especially in this generation where it has access to Heavy Duty Boots, but fortunately, that is not the case. Also would have been nice against Pokemon like Fortress, who you could Oko if you ran, ran a Fire move, but unfortunately, he's not in this generation. So yeah, uh, Pangoro just does not- Mold Breaker just sounds nice on paper, but in practice it just doesn't really do much for the type. Now its other ability, Scrappy on the other hand, is pretty decent. Uh, it allows you to not only hit Sableye super effectively, but it also grants you a very key immunity to Intimidate. And this is actually really good for a few reasons. One, it's good because it allows you to deal with the most obnoxious Incineroar on Fire and uh, Dark. And secondly, it's nice because that basically means that his power cannot be lowered through traditional means. So, if they decide to intimidate you uh, with a, let's say, a, basically any intimidate user, I can think of an Arcanine, let's say that. Um, if they decide to intimidate you with Arcanine, you can just ignore that, shrug it off, and then uh, proceed to hit them with full power. It, it's just a really nice quality of life thing, along with the fact that you can hit ghost types with your close combat, which is nice for Aegislash, especially on Steel. So that way you don't have to guess and use knockoff, you can just 
click close combat and you don't even have to worry about egg slash switching in, which is so good, actually. Because it is very annoying, especially for Kelvia, who would normally wipe the floor with steel, has to make those 50 50s against Aegis Slash. So, the fact that Pangorge can just completely bypass that for the steel MB is actually really, really good. Um, besides that, it's also got a ludic ludicrous power with a uh, Adamant, and it doesn't even need to run uh, plus speed because it's not outspeeding anything key or vital, even if they're slowed down. So, Pangorge can actually forego this and actually just run. 381 and still outspeed everything it needs to outspeed, which is mainly walls, because this thing is basically a wall breaker. Um, speaking of wall breaker, we have another set that's a Swords Dance with Knockoff Drain Punch and Bullet Punch. Uh, this set uses Iron Fist. This is actually pretty decent, especially when paired with Drain Punch, but generally you're probably going to want Scrappy instead because it helps with the fighting MU a lot better. But Iron Fist is useful for this set, especially because it'll help boost the power of Bullet Punch, which is extremely needed, especially if you're trying to pick off fairy types with your Sword Stance set. But yeah, in general, Pangoro has a couple of nice sets, but I feel like as a Pokemon, it's just not as good due to its inability to actually come in on a lot of things and actually threaten a lot of Pokemon easily, because like I said, fairy coverage is everywhere, Mimikyu just sits on you, and... There's just a lot of problems with this Pokemon that you can't deal with. Also, it's very slow, and it's not bulky to compensate. So, while it does have 95 base HP, its defenses don't do much for it, and its typing is not the greatest defensively. It has that psychic immunity, yes, but it's still weak to parry, it's still weak to its own type fighting, and it's also weak to, uh, it's also weak to flying, which is still pretty annoying. But yeah, it's just not the best, and especially on fighting, you need to have good defensive qualities, and Pangoro, despite its psychic immunity, does not have that. But regardless, it still has its niche as a powerful attacker, especially with Scrappy and Moldbreaker, if you can get Moldbreaker to work. But yeah, Pangoro is just one of those Pokemon that's just sadly outclassed, and is a little hard to use when you fit on a team. But you can try your best and use it if you wish, and if you really like the Pokemon. So the team we have Pangoro Today is going to be a it's going to be using the Choice Band set. Uh, we'll be replacing Darkest Lariat with Knockoff because after testing, I realized Darkest Lariat is a little too niche to be useful, especially since I thought it would be good against Corviknight. But most of the time, you're going to be clicking close combat against him, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, standard uh, sets of across the board. Still using Choice Scarf Terrakion because Choice Scarf Pangora is not good at all because it's too slow to outspeed anything reliably and it just ends up being useless, and you do not want this Pokemon, this slow 236 speed Pokemon, to be your speed control. So, yeah, and literally Holucha does your job better. Holucha actually adds speed to you with a Choice Scarf on, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, I think it's 376 that Pangora reaches, so... Holucha doesn't add speed you, but like, it's pretty sad that Holucha basically does your job better as speed control. So yeah, that's why we use Terrakion, and we just leave Pango to do wall breaking. And speaking of wall breakers, we actually have Como on this team instead of Verizion, because I feel like Verizion doesn't really benefit Pangoro that much. Whereas in the last team, Delayed actually benefited because it actually had decent special defense to help out with uh, certain threats on Psychic. But on this team, uh, Como is going to help us with our offensive presence a lot more, so that way we aren't as passive. But yeah. This team can do work, but it's fighting, so it's gonna die to a lot, naturally. But yeah, let's head into a few matches. Our first match is up against Fire, and Fire is really annoying for this type because of this Pokemon right here. Especially when he's under Sun, he can just click uh, whatever he wants against you, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, Colossal comes out. Colossal is actually a rapid spinner, so we can't do anything about that. So we're gonna send out Keldeo to stop him. Because even if I put up uh, rocks there, uh, you just. Uh... Oh, and I missed my Hydro Pump. Great. Uh, we're gonna switch into Coma to deal with any of what Nine Tails is trying to do to us. Uh, we're gonna. So we could clang our soul here, but then Charizard comes in and kills us because it's Choice Scarf. But we'll take our chances. 
Alright, he sends in Colossal instead, which is kind of a misplay. Uh, apparently, Colossal takes a Drain Punch from this Pokemon, which is kind of ridiculous. That's crazy. Uh, well, regardless, uh, next up, who's coming out? Uh, Charizard, of course. Let's see what he's using. Air Slash, does he get the flinch? Yep, of course. Um, so, we're gonna switch it to Rakion here. Switch in on the Air Slash, because we know he's scarred because he outsped Como. Uh, we're gonna use Stone Edge. Alright, his Salazzle dies. Don't know what Cinderace is doing here, but we're gonna assume it's Choice Scar, because that's just the right thing to assume. Alright, we're gonna Sky Attack here. Alright, so it looks like Arcanine probably will kill us. So we'll just Sword Stance here. Alright, he misplayed. Uh, I think we want to use Close Combat. I'm not sure which one kills, to be honest with you. But actually, yeah, no, you know what? We'll just use Close Combat. Yeah, because Close Combat was the most powerful move there, and there was basically no reason not to use it. Because, yeah, he can revenge kill me with E-Speed now, but he was probably doing that anyway if he's the right set. So yeah, there's nothing I could have done about that. Anyway. Uh, we're going to Thunder Wave here, predicting someone to come out. Yep, Charizard comes out. We hit the T-Wave, thank goodness. Uh, we put up rocks to weaken his team further. For some reason, he decides to keep using Air Slash... Well, that's fine, I guess. We're gonna sack uh, Cabalion here, by the way, because we don't need him anymore. And trying to switch out into anything else is kind of just deadly. Uh, we're gonna spam knockoff here. Oh, apparently Charizard's faster than Pangoro. That's just kind of sad. Uh, not that Air Slash would kill, because even though Pangor is not bulky, Charizard is really weak. Like, especially with uh, uh, solar power, he just does not hit very hard. Um, let's go check the calc real quick. Oh, we've done this before, huh? Uh, except you're not plus one. Uh, high jump kick doesn't do that much to us, especially if it's from a choice scarfer. So I think the play here is definitely to try and use the same sword. Even though it doesn't do that much. Wait, I'm stupid. If I knew it was choice scarf, then I should have used Hydro Bump. Uh, uh, actually, wait. Oh no, yeah, he was. So he wins. That's unfortunate for us. Um, I definitely shouldn't have lost, but I misplayed really hard. Yeah, he says GG easy, but it wasn't easy for him at all. He literally lost if, uh... Let's just take a look at his rank real quick. And don't flame this guy, by the way, if you see this video, but yeah. Um, 74% DXC, he has played 446 games, can barely even get to this ELO without actually just being a bad player. Um, pretty sad, especially since you've played 446 games, you should be higher if you've played that many games, but yeah, you know, it's easy, it's easy to win these games. It's so easy. Uh, we go against Water next, which is quite annoying. So Keldeo is going to become a really big problem here. Uh, he sends out Pelipper first, so we put up rocks. <sighs> uh, Seismitoad. We don't really have a solid game plan for how we're going to deal with this dude. Um, yeah, no, there's just really nothing we can really do about this, so we're going to have to end up sacking something. And I'd rather not sack Cabalion, but I think we're going to have to. At the very least, we'll prevent rocks from going up. Alright, so Keldeo comes in and can revenge kill Seismitoad. Unless he's water absorbed, which is probably not likely because he had sped me, so yeah. Seismitoad is dead. 
uh, don't know what Pelipper is up to. Uh, we'll predict the uh, hurricane. Alright, we got the right prediction. Little stone edge here. He's gonna probably send in a Pex. Okay, he's sending Crawdon instead. Don't know why he did that. Oh, we'll send in Como since he resists both. Alright, uh, Clangor Soul. We'll use Clanging Scales here. Pex uses Haze. That doesn't matter because we can still just click Clang and Scales. So he kills off his Toxapex. Very cool. Now we're going to see what item he is. He is Choice Star, as I predicted. Sorry about that, there was a brief interruption, uh, but yeah, right now we're probably going to have to, yeah, use Stone Edge with Terrakion, hopefully hit. Probably won't though, because I got pretty bad luck. Send out Gyarados, Intimidate, no Intimidate, um, yeah, that's going to be a big problem. Uh, we'll sag Tangoro here. Sadly, Pangoro is not putting in a lot of use. Uh, now, oh wait, he just used Liquidation. I'm pretty sure he's a. Whatever, we'll just ignore it. Uh, Secret Sword kills Crawdon. At this point, uh, I'm pretty sure you know who wins. Uh, Halucha wins. And yeah, we confirmed he's not that set, so we'll use Sky Attack, hopefully it hits. It hits, and we win. GG. Um, that was more of a game that way, but only served to get sacked there, which is really unfortunate, but yeah, it's fine. Alright, we'll do one last match before uh, we head out. This game is taking a while to load up. Usually matches have been quite a little bit faster, for me especially, since this ELO is the most popular ELO. But, it's whatever. Alright, we get Dark, St like I said before. Not a favorable MU, especially because he's got Grim Snarl right there. What a big problem you are. Oh, and of us too, but... Grimstar is the bigger problem, because it can just click its stab move and just always get a kill every time. Especially because we're using Pangoro. <laughs> the sword stance set would have actually been better here, but it's whatever. We have to do what we have to do. So, he sends out Mandibuzz first for whatever reason, I do not know. He tried to use Taunt on me, don't know why he did that either. We'll use T-Wave on his Tyranitar. Uh, Paraflinch didn't matter because he wasn't killing me with anything there anyway. As I said, he wasn't killing me with anything there. Hopefully he gets flinched. No flinch. Disgusting. But whatever. Um, he's gonna send out Crawdon. Uh, we are going to prevent that and send out Como because he takes both stabs. Alright, now as of this turn, we that's ban damage, I'm pretty sure, yeah, so... We'll just do Clangor Soul. Uh, hopefully Grimstall dies to this. Wow, even with a crit, it didn't do enough. We do survive on one, though. He probably has Sucker Punch, though, right? Oh. Oh, that's not good for you at all. Um, he's probably going to think that Aqua Jet kills, but it does not. Because I literally, you literally saw how much damage it did last time. It did, like, 20. So if I have 23, that's just not going to happen. 
And yeah, that's unfortunate for him. Uh, I feel like... Nah. No, I don't think the crit mattered, did it? I feel like the crit killed him regardless. Let's go back a few turns, because I just want to make sure I didn't hack him there. So we cling our soul blaze here. I mean, we cling our soul here. Oh, you know what? It probably did matter, because I lived on, like, so few HP that the HP I drained from him actually allowed me to live. Yeah, that mattered. Uh, I'm so sorry, dude. I didn't mean to hex you. You didn't deserve to lose there. I think I still could've won, though, because his Grimstar was so weakened at that point. Even if it was, like, a normal hit, uh, Chaldeo or Terrakion actually just kinda cleaned up at that point. So yeah, it didn't super matter, but it's still kinda scummy that that happened to him. Very sad and unfortunate way to end the video. But, yeah. Um, also, Pangoro did not do much here, but sadly, that's just how it is. But I can show you a replay where Pangoro was of use. So, let's do a little quick search for some of the games that I have done. Alright, so, I believe it was this one. So Pangoro here um, is obviously going to be of much use due to its immunity to the psychic typing, which actually makes it harder for me or anyone to do anything. Uh, I missed a stone edge here. Uh, Mew gets up quite a few hazards. Oh, and this is on the previous team I was using before with Verizion, which doesn't really do much as I found out later on. But yeah, Cabalion comes out here. He uses Play Rough, and we figure out he uses Choice Scarf because of the damage he does. And also because he decided to switch out. Uh, Raichu takes the T-Wave that I was going to send out. Kills Cabalion with Thunderbolt. I actually think that might be Specs damage, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Rizion comes out because it takes Thunderbolt, obviously. Starts setting on screens. Dies one hit to send a headbutt. So, you would think that's surprising, but it's actually not because there's Psychic Terrain and everything going on, so... Yeah, it was fine that Rizion died there. Anyway, as I said before, Pangoro is immune to Psychic Stab, so normally what would happen here, if once Rizion died, is that my entire team probably would have gotten swept because of Psychic Terrain making it impossible to revenge kill him, and the fact that he scarfed and everything, and he had the flinch chances. Yeah, no, I would have absolutely lost this game if I didn't have Pangoro here. So, Pangoro, unironically, won me this game and made him a second guess between using a... Uh, Zen headbutt spam. And that's one of the reasons why it has that niche, because it can literally just do that. Just stop a Scarfer with with a Psychic move, dead in its tracks. And that's so vital to fighting, because that literally won me the entire match here. Also, that Play Rough miss did not matter, because I lived Play Rough here anyway, and I would have hit him twice. So, he would have been dead regardless. Actually, wait. I don't think that's right. Um, no, I'm actually wrong about that. So the player of it did kind of matter, actually, but uh, not entirely because what would have happened is that Terrakion would have come in and it would have been spamming moves, and essentially what would have happened is that Pangor would have came in and done something later. But yeah, it's whatever. And after that, Terrakion cleans up Raichu, and the game is over. And this game would not have been winnable whatsoever if it wasn't for the fact that Pangoro was right there. So yeah, that's a good way to end off the video and to show Pangoro's use on the competitive fighting teams in Gen 8 Sword and Shield. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and if you liked this, subscribe for more, and also be sure to put the bell on for notifications so you know when I actually upload a video or when I don't. Uh, and also just be sure to be active in the community post that I make once in a while. And without further ado, this is the end of the video, so you all have a very good day.